Thank you, Ambassador, for finding time um, for us today. As we see status quo in Karabakh, a issue is becoming dangerous considering the escalation of violence along the um, line of contact. Is the conflict that used to be described as frozen is now melting and what should be done to reduce tensions? Well, first of all, let me thank you for coming into the State Department. It's a pleasure to talk to you and also to reach out to your many viewers uh, in the region. Of course, we're very concerned about the situation along the line of contact. And as you see, the, the situation is not frozen at all. Uh, tell, a, tell a mother of uh, a dead or injured soldier uh, that this is a frozen conflict. It hasn't been frozen, and we're very concerned about the escalations. And there are things that should be done about this new uh, escalation. The first is I'm very pleased to see that the presidents may be meeting with each other in Sochi today or tomorrow, and we hope that they can make progress on key issues, especially putting it in to the violence along the line of contact in the Armenian and Azerbaijan border. We also hope very much that the recent threats that we have heard from some of the parties involved and also the provocative, uh, these provocative threats uh, can end. They don't bring us closer to peace. In fact, they incite violence. And if we're going to find a way to a lasting settlement, we need to see an end to hostile rhetoric and these kinds of provocative threats. So one of the outcomes of this very important meeting with President Putin, I hope, will be a commitment from both sides that they will uh, end this hostile rhetoric, respect the ceasefire, and work with the co-chairs towards a peaceful settlement. And do you think that Armenian and the Azerbaijani side are ready for this? Well, I can, I, can, I can assure you in my conversations with both presidents that they are committed to finding a way to peace. They want a negotiated settlement, and they do not want further violence, period. And we want to work with them. We're there to help mediate uh, a settlement. But first of all, there has to be the political will on the part of the presidents, and I hope that we will see that. And by the presidents talking with each other, we hope that there will be a renewed commitment to finding a way to uh, a, a lasting uh, peace. So we're very hopeful about the way ahead. Now, we're concerned about what's happening. Neither side wants to look weak in the face of the other, and we understand that. That said, the way towards a peaceful settlement is, to, uh, is through the negotiating uh, table and not on the battlefield. And, and let's go to the, uh, Russia's role in, in, in this conflict. In the past several years, Russia appears to have supplied significant amount of weapons to Azerbaijan. Uh, both uh, Russian and um, Azerbaijani officials have estimated the total volume of defense a contract signed since 2010 at nearly five billion dollars. Um, given this, what are Russia's true intentions in your opinion? Well, Russia has a lot on its plate right now, uh, a lot of concerns uh, in its neighborhood, and certainly it doesn't want to uh, add to its problems by hostilities increasing and an escalation of violence uh, 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 in Nagorno-Karabakh, nor do we want to, s to see that. We've been working very productively with uh, the Russians. I work closely with my Russian uh, co-chair to uh, help to find a negotiated settlement. And we'll continue to do that, and I believe Russia will continue to do that. Russia has no vi interest in seeing renewed violence and instability so close to uh, its uh, borders. 
uh, nor do we want to see that. We have an interest as well in seeing peace and stability in the South Caucasus. We're committed to working with the parties and finding a way to a lasting settlement in Nagorno-Karabakh. Look, these countries in South, the South Caucasus, Caucasus are our friends. These are our uh, partners uh, uh, around the world. And we expect to continue those, those important relationships. And we expect to work with the R Russians productively on this and other conflicts. And in the case of Nagorno-Karabakh, I believe we can work together to bring about a peaceful settlement. But then how do you explain why would Russia sell weapons to Azerbaijan, knowing that it's a conflict, uh, it's a country that is in conflict and is mayored by it? Well, Russia is, of course, free to have commercial relations with any countries it chooses, as does the United States and, and many countries. That does not prohibit them from working productively with us to find a way towards uh, peace. Of course, it's up to up to the two countries, Armenia and Azerbaijan, to restrain from the use of, of, of force and to re not renounce violence as a way towards solving Nagorno-Karabakh. What we want to see is that the parties come together uh, at the peace table. I would say also that the president's simply meeting on occasion, or the foreign minister's meeting on occasion, is not sufficient to bring about a negotiated settlement. We want to see more. We want to see a negotiating process that is more intensive than occasional meetings. And we believe that that kind of process can help to bring about the settlement we're all looking for. Thank you very much. And one last question. Considering of what's going on in the world, Ukraine, Iraq, Syria, is Karabakh issue, can Karabakh issue be considered as priority for U.S. foreign agenda? Well, you're very right. This is a busy time in, in the world. And in recent memory, I haven't seen so many uh, uh, points of, of tension and concern. But that doesn't make Nagorno-Karabakh any less important. As I said, we have a commitment to working with our partners uh, in uh, the South Caucasus. Our goal is to see a Europe whole, free, and at peace. And this is what we're working for. Right now, Nagorno-Karabakh remains a stain on Europe. And we want to make sure that it is resolved in a way that, of course, is just and fair to all the parties, but ends the kind of violence that we've seen and leads to exactly what I've said, a Europe whole free and at peace. And I believe that's the goal of Armenia and Azerbaijan as well. Thank you, Ambassador. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Thank you.